Hello class, this is section 8.2. In this video, we are going to start considering non-homogeneous differential equations, and in particular, non-homogeneous differential equations where the non-homogeneous part doesn't depend on time. We have a PDE, like so, with a boundary condition and an initial condition. This looks similar to the various heat equations that we've seen so far in this class. There are a few important differences. Firstly, we are considering a heat source. So you have this Qx term. Now, if you may remember, this refers to the fact that we have a one-dimensional rod, but that one-dimensional rod is generating heat. Now, notice that the heat source, Qx, depends on x, but not on t. So for this problem, we are not considering a heat source that changes with time. So we just have Qx, it changes with like the part of the rod that it's in, like uh, the start of the rod, may, the left end of the rod may be generating more heat than the right end of the rod, but the amount of heat that the rod generates doesn't vary in time. Now this Q of X term is known as a non-homogeneous part. You can check that adding two solutions of this equation doesn't give you a solution, and multiplying the solution u by a constant doesn't give you a solution of the equation again and this q of x term is the cause of it. So generally, uh, any term that doesn't, doesn't contain a u, a u prime, or so on, will cause the equation to be non-homogeneous. We also have boundary conditions that are non-homogeneous. We have these terms a and b over here, and we have our initial condition as usual. And it's important that all the three of the non-homogeneous terms in this problem do not have a time Dependence. So this technique that we are going to discuss in this video only applies if the non-homogeneous parts don't have a time dependence. The first step into solving these non-homogeneous problems is to start with the equilibrium solution. Sometimes you have to figure out what the equilibrium solution is on your own. We did a bit of that in chapter 2. Or more, or more commonly in this chapter, you'll just be given the equilibrium solution. So remember what equilibrium solutions are. Equilibrium solutions are solutions that do not change with time. So in particular, we have the time derivative of u e x t is equal to zero. So we don't even write the t in the argument of the function. Nevertheless, they still solve the differential equation. So left-hand side is zero. So we have zero equals k partial squared partial x squared u x plus q x. So these are solutions that solve the equation and also solve the boundary conditions. So we do have u0 equals a and ul equals b. Now note that for equilibrium solutions, we do not consider the initial condition. Like this initial condition is not considered when we're thinking about the equilibrium solution. But it does satisfy every other part of the differential equation in addition to not being dependent on time. For this problem, I'm just going to give you what the equilibrium solution is. In our case, um, explicitly, we have u e x equals to this term over here, where i x is the second second um, second antiderivative of q x over k, or rather a second antiderivative. You can check on your own time that this works, and it did, indeed satisfies all the properties we talked about before here, but. The actual form of the equilibrium solution isn't that important. Uh, what's important is that there exists one. The second step is to perform a change of variable. Vxt equals uxt minus your equilibrium solution. And you can see why this helps. This removes all the non-homogeneous parts from our partial differential equation over here. Let's see what happens when we do that. So Vxt equals uxt minus uex, but this is the same thing saying that uxt is equal to vxt plus the equilibrium solution. And let's substitute all that into our PDE. So we get derivative of vxt plus the equilibrium solution equals k times the second derivative of vxt plus equilibrium solution plus q of x. So we have the 
We distribute derivatives. We have partial vxt plus partial partial t uex. But remember that the equilibrium solution, by definition, doesn't depend on time. So this is actually going to go to zero. And we have k partial squared partial x squared vxt plus k partial partial x squared u e x t the, um, e x sorry that's the equivalent solution so there's no t plus q x but again remember that the equivalent solution solves the heat equation so this is actually zero in particular this is going to be equal to zero as well and what we're left with it's just the regular old heat equation without any homo non-homogeneous parts. And you can see already why this change of variables was so useful. So we're not there yet. Let's see what happens to the boundary conditions here. So we have u0t equals a. So u0t is equal to a. However, uh, by the change of variable, u0t is also equal to v0t plus ue0. So u0t is a, but remember that the equilibrium solution satisfies the same boundary conditions that the original equation has. So in particular, u0e is a. This is going to be a2. And we have v0t is 0. In the same way, we have ULT equals VLT plus UEL. However, um, ULT is B, that's our boundary condition. How, and we know that the equivalent solution satisfies the same boundary condition as the original equation. So UEL is equal to B as well. And we are left with VLT is equal to zero. So we have our boundary conditions here. And they are homogeneous. So we have the Dirichlet boundary conditions. So we have a PDE with Dirichlet boundary conditions. Now let's see what happens to our initial conditions. We have UX0 equals FX. And that can change to... So now instead we have from ux0 equals fx, we have vx0 plus uex equals fx, vx0 equals fx minus uex. So our initial conditions also change a little bit. But as you can see, we have this one-dimensional heat equation with Dirichlet boundary conditions, and we already know how to solve this. Vxt equals sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a n sine n pi x over L times e minus k n pi over L squared t from the chapter 2 work that we did already. And of course, uh, a n are the Fourier coefficients of the initial condition. Um, this is going to be 2 over L. Remember, our initial condition is not f, but rather fx minus uex. From here, remember that. Um, sine n pi x over L dx. So that's what it is. And since you know what v is, we, it's pretty easy to figure out what u is. And from a change of variable, we had uxt equals vxt plus uext. Sorry, uex, it uh, doesn't depend on time. So this is just going to be what you had before plus your equilibrium solution.